Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week we have a combination of features that made it into the 0.18 release candidate, as well as the first PRs merged for the 0.19 cycle. Merges this week include global gizmos, GLTF extension handling, and a full screen material, and more. Meanwhile, Shift O is a Bevy Jam 6 game with updates this week, while Soup Room is an in-progress framework for Undertale and Deltarune fan games. And kicking off the PRs, we've got easy demo recording. Creating game screenshots and videos for social media and trailers, etc., is now easier with the Easy Screenshot plugin and as of 21237, Easy Screen Record plugin. It comes with some caveats like not being available on Windows, but does enable recording videos in CI. As shown in 21243, which shows you how to add this to an example and get a recording out of it. So now there's built-in screenshotting and video recording, and you can script functionality like camera movement using the tools you already know. 22107 brings a global version of Gizmos, which can be useful outside of Bevy systems. This includes things like math libraries. I have an inverse kinematics library that this could be useful for. And this PR is a partial upstream of a crate called Glizmo, if you like this pattern and want a little bit more. Glizmo, of course, is the only way you're going to get access to this in Bevy 0.17. So while you're waiting for this to actually get into a Bevy release, go check out that crate. And Bevy supports a selection of hard-coded GLTF extensions, including KHR Lights Punctual, which powers GLTF directional point and spotlights. And of course, it supports GLTF extras very well, which are application-specific extra GLTF data. 22106 adds the ability to process GLTF extension data in user space, by defining a trait-based handler with a set of hooks for nodes, materials, textures, and more. This was originally implemented to power Skeen's component insertion, which is a Blender add-on for Bevy, and can be used in a variety of use cases, as you can see here, such as building animation graphs when loading GLTF files, or switching meshes from 3D to 2D when loading. And running a full screen shader often brings users to the post-processing example, which is a fairly large example that exposes WGPU more directly than the higher level material APIs. 2414 introduces a first version of a full screen material, which will run a full screen triangle with a specified shader. There's more to be done here, so consider this a first step towards higher level full screen material APIs, but there is an example called full screen material, which you can go play with now. And before 21995, we had state and next state resources. This allowed you to access the current state as well as set the next state to transition to. Now we also have previous state, which can be accessed from systems like those that run on enter to know which state the application is transitioning from. In 22038, support was added for font weights. The font used for testing is a variable font, which is nice to see. And you can also play with this in the font weights example. And a first step towards something that's like a render to relationship, 2917, makes render target a component. And there are cases where meshes take on globally positioned vertices and use the same transform. This can be useful in a procedural CAD or architecture style workflow. You can see the old behavior here with a lot of flickering. 22041 makes these sort of cases behave better with transparency by sorting meshes by their AABB center instead of the transform translation. Now you'll notice that there is another bit of flashing here still but there is another PR to be made to further improve this. And let's kick off the showcases with Shift O. This is an update to a Bevy Jam number six entry called Shift O. The update includes new UI, difficulty progression changes, and additional mechanics and level ratings. This is available over on itch.io for you to play. And Soup Rune is a framework for creating Undertale and Delta Rune style RPGs. And Spacefaring.is is a mission planning sandbox where you can launch a satellite into geostationary orbit. This is, as you can see here, available on the web for you to play with. Next up, we've got a volumetric clouds demo that really brought the volumetric clouds enthusiasts out and resulted in an updated work and project in engine PR for potential future upstreaming of a volumetric clouds feature. The author details how the clouds are placed, more in the Discord thread, and there's plenty more discussion if you wanna dig deeper. The clouds in this demo are static at the moment, but could be made dynamic in the future. And I really do like seeing old Connect demos. This is a demo using an old Connect 360 to power particle effects. Then we've got a demo of using Bevy Easy Portals to make recursively infinite portals. This is, as far as I'm aware, queued for an update in the future for the crate, so look forward to that. And then we've got a work in progress implementation of geometry clip maps. 
This video demonstrates rendering an 8192 by 8192 kilometer map using about 50,000 triangles. And then we've got Cuboid Wars. Cuboid Wars is a fast paced multiplayer arena shooter built with Rust, Bevy obviously, and quick networking. Players navigate a procedurally generated maze, collect cookies for points, gather power ups, and avoid ghosts. The game features a client server architecture with an authoritative server logic and client side prediction. And first up in the crates this week, we've got Bevy Tiled Background. This is a Bevy plugin, or really kind of a demo as well, for creating tiled animated UI backgrounds with support for rotation, staggering, spacing, and scrolling animation. And then Actuate got a 0.21 release. Actuate is a declarative, lifetime-friendly UI framework and scene builder for Bevy. There's plenty of examples for this one in the README, so go check it out if you are interested. And in the devlogs this week, we've got Making Things Look Better, Maui Online MMO, devlog number 8. Maui Online gets ground texture blending, player and monster models with animations, and monster sound. And next up, in the educational section, we've got How I Made AAA Sky Rendering from Scratch, an open-source sky shader with gradient background, stars, northern lights, that is an Aurora, and the crate is Bevy Sky Gradient. And finally, we've got Unifying the Fuller Stack with Entity Component Systems. A talk at DevOps Days Wollongong, I hope I pronounced that correctly, that describes the frictions faced by developers when traversing the stack both horizontally and vertically, and the characteristics of an ECS that make it an excellent contender to unify that stack. And that's it for this week in Bevy. As always, we have the pull requests that were merged. We will keep you up to date when release candidate number two comes out. Happy holidays and have a great rest of your week.